Boom! Hello, Kryptonites, and welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, hanging out here with Mr. Satoshi Nakamoto, as you guys can see here. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to let you guys know that we do have a few referral links here you guys can check out before we get started to show some support to our channel for C3 Media and the bunch all right so first things first you guys can check us out on youtube we do have a youtube channel you guys can go hit the subscribe channel there to uh see more see the videos of what we're talking about we also we are, we're also on odyssey check that out we just got we just got approved on odyssey uh last week so we're slowly building that up um yeah definitely support that and uh of course we are a podcast so you can find us on uh, Spotify on Anchor and pretty much any other platform of podcast uh, podcasting platform that you use. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and move over to the quote of the day. All right. So the quote of the day. Let's scroll on down here real quick and show you guys this quote of the day. And of course, this is obviously in Discord. You guys can come over to Discord and see what we're doing here. We got a bunch of uh, uh, bot games on here, uh, ways to collect some coins. And uh, redeem them for some NFTs if you guys are interested in that. All right, quote of the day. Investing in crypto is like being married. You have to keep going through the good and the bad. For the better or for the worse. For the richer or for the poorer. Till death do us part. Hoddle. Written by Naja Roberts. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, cool. Now, we have job of the day. Of course. Once again, we're going to head over to, if you see Crypto Careers, still in our Discord server. We do have a channel here where you can see all the jobs that are open and available to check out. We are going to open up, where did it go? Oh, I think I closed it out. There we go. Open this one up. It was Taxbit. Yep, that's the one. Okay, here we go. So this is a uh, position open from Taxbit, Principal Application Security Engineer. About Taxbit. Taxbit is helping to drive mainstream adoption of digital assets by connecting the consumer, enterprise, and government tax and accounting ecosystem. Our software as a service platform streamlines our, streamlines our customers' reporting experience across traditional and digital asset classes. And we are trusted in this work by thousands of customers, leading exchanges and enterprises, government agencies, including the IRS. Respected accounting firms, and others to solve complex accounting problems at scale and ensure compliance with the latest tax laws. Tax bid investors include Paradigm, Tiger Global, PayPal Ventures, Winklevoss Capital, Coinbase Ventures, and other leading crypto investors. Our team is located in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Seattle, Washington. If you're searching for the companies that's dedicated to your growth, recognizes your unique contribution, and provides a fun, flexible, and inclusive work environment, then TaxBit is the place for you. We're looking for team members ready to join a hyper-growth company and are excited to work at the forefront of an entirely new industry. All right, so here we go. Let's look at the experience. What you'll need for this position here for the Principal Application Security Engineer over at TaxBit what you need is at least at least eight years of software development and or application security experience Two, experience with security testing tools like burps uh, burp suite zap etc and three uh, experience with aws cloud infrastructure and security best practices four knowledge and understanding of owasp top 10 uh, assist the dev team with cvss score and severity so high severity vulnerabilities are prioritized appropriately and fixed in a timely manner. Ability to write scripts to automate work, Python, Bash, etc. Experience with any of the following technologies, containers, Bitbucket, SAST, and DAST tools. Working knowledge of a scripting language, e.g. Python. Experience with managing applications, bug bounty programs, extensive experience conducting applications, pen test, and or coordinating application pen test, with a qualified technical vendor. That is what you'll need. Of course, the eight years experience is what they're looking for. You need that for sure. All right, so now that we're done with job of the day and quote of the day, and it sounds like somebody jumped in here. What do we got? Oh, looks like they just poked in and poked back out. All right, 
Cool. Let's head on over to do 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 news of the day. All right, first news. I was skimming through this stuff, and of course, it's all good news. I think all news is could be good news or bad news. What do you guys think? Anyways, this one is written by Dimitar Zanzarov. Nigeria's central bank to allow bill payments in Inaria. Now, if you guys don't know, this news article here is pretty much breaking news, saying that uh, Nigeria is actually coming out with their CBDC next week. Can you believe that? Next week, they will have their first CBDC. Awesome. Uh, so, congratulations to Nigeria. And it's pretty much saying that, you know, um, all the folks out there have mobile phones and it's pretty much the best way to uh, get integrated into crypto news and CBDCs. Um, and of course, it, it explains that CBDCs are different than Bitcoin. Uh, let's see, there are 33 million Nigerian adults that trade digital assets in the past six months. 50 of those two are, 52% of those have invested more than half of their wealth into the market. It's a good thing, I think, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it is. I don't know. Expo is exposure good or is exposure bad? I guess it depends on the market, right? Um, but I think getting into crypto, in my opinion, that's why I make this crypto uh, podcast, is to let be, bring awareness to crypto because I think crypto is the future and uh, it's something that I truly enjoy. And yeah, like right now, currently, the, the market is down. Uh, but for me, it's like buying at a discount. It's like 50% off right now. So I'm just stacking sets and hodling. Diamond hands, baby. Diamond hands. Can't go wrong with that. All right, so yeah, congratulations to Nigeria. Next news written by Mandy Williams. US DOJ charges mining capital coin CEO for allegedly running a $62 million crypto fraud. All right, there is, uh, okay, here we go. The United States Department of Justice has indicted Luis Capucci Jr., the CEO and co-founder of Mining Capital Coin for allegedly running a $62 million fraud scheme yeah yeah you don't you see <sighs> of course we all know that schemes are bad but what's unfortunate is that for us people that are trying to make it big in the crypto space we always it's one of those things that you know do your research why uh, D, what is it d-y-o-r do your own research it's super difficult to do your research when there is no research available, especially when when you're one of the first front runners of the project. And in order to be successful, you have to be a front runner. So it's it's you're taking a gamble no matter what. You don't know what you're, what you're getting into. And at the end, you probably get scammed or you make it. And some people do make it out. So yeah, this guy's gonna be doing a lot of time behind bars, up to 45 years in prison. If he is guilty, if he's found guilty of those charges, was it worth it is the question. Moving over to El, uh, El Salvador buys another 500 Bitcoins amid market pullback. This one's written by Andrew Thorovalas. Now, if you don't know, uh, the president of El Salvador has been buying Bitcoin. He is pro Bitcoin. Uh, president Bukele has pretty much made El Salvador the Bitcoin hub of the world. Aside from Florida, but when it comes to countries, Bitcoin is uh, is a recognized currency and you can use Bitcoin anywhere in El Salvador to buy products and services. As long as you obviously you have your own uh, wallet and you can make that transaction happen. So what happened now? Bukele tweeted that he bought another 500 Bitcoin for an average of $30,000 and $30,744. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good deal. I mean, he bought Bitcoins. I bought some other coins. Um, but yeah, he says, buy the dip, man. Buy the freaking dip. And so he did. Awesome. Uh, as of right now, they have accumulated. El Salvador has uh, approximately 2,301 Bitcoin. So yeah, they're just going to continue to keep building and building and building until they have all the Bitcoins. No, we don't know. We don't know. I think that's still kind of small in comparison to other like corporate mining facilities that are mining um, a lot more than that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good start for a nation trying to come out of, of their, I guess, recession, depression, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. Um, is it helping them? 
you know, I was watching this documentary on, on, on El Salvador and the citizens were saying, hey, it's, it's crazy how the president is buying all this Bitcoin and trying to bring people into the nation, you know, showing them that uh, El Salvador is, is a, a Bitcoin friendly country. Uh, yet he uh, is not really supporting his own people by providing them with uh, food and medical services. So it's kind of like uh, what this documentary did. And of course, there's always a viewpoint of things. But what this documentary documentary showed was that Bukele is more or less standing in front of a curtain and showing the good side of El Salvador. But yet the majority of the nation is in ruins and needs some uh, some TLC. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I would like, um, I guess the proposal would be, I would like to see that there is a bill on the table in El Salvador that, um, some of the, I don't even know if it's possible. Some, some of the taxes that are created off of Bitcoin transactions are used for local services, such as, you know, road repair, building, building repair, uh, medical services, um, uh, and I guess donating back to nonprofit organizations to help support the the poor and the needy. That would be pretty cool. But um, I don't know if there's enough uh, tourists there yet. I don't know the exact number, um, but I have a feeling that there's not that many tourists there to really make a, a economic difference in the nation. But yeah, that's El Salvador. All right, moving on to the next news written by Andrew Thoravalos. Fortress protocol hacked for $3 million, drained of all funds. So, okay, so $3 million isn't really that much. This is more like, uh, the reason I pulled this one up because, it, yeah, it talks about Fortress protocol. But, in fact, what I want to talk about is um, Tornado Cash. That's what it was. Okay, Tornado Cash. So, obviously, just like the title says, um, uh, Fortress protocol lost pretty much all their funds, $3 million, which is in crypto terms, that's not really a lot of money. Um, but I mean, if you're getting started, yeah, it's a lot of money for like the general, for, for me, $3 million is a lot of money, man. I would like to have $3 million, but in, in the crypto space, when you're making a big, big project, like a global project, $3 million isn't that much money. Um, so yeah, but still they're pretty much done. Um, what the hackers ended up doing was, um, uh, I guess, I don't know how, how do I say this in in in, in commoners terms. Um, I'll just read it. How about that? Um, he uh, he the, the hacker passed a proposal ID eleven, which changed the collateral factors on FTS tokens with loans contracts from zero to seven. Uh, I think that's quadrillion. He also updated the price oracle used by the loan contracts, such as the tokens price would update even if voting power was zero. Um, yeah, see, that still doesn't really explain what, what happened. That sounds really complicated. But, okay, here, how about this quote here? Uh, with these updates, the values of the attacker's collateral FTX was raised significantly, so the attacker was able to borrow large amounts of other tokens from the loan contracts, explained Sir TK over Twitter. So, there you go. There you go. So, pretty much just made a fake loan. Yeah. And drained the contract. And that's pretty much what hackers do. They just find vulnerabilities in it. Now, here's the interesting thing. What did the hackers do with the funds that they, the $3 million that they, that they uh, um, siphoned, pretty much? Uh, they used Tornado Cash. Now, if you guys don't know what Tornado Cash is, it is a, um, a mixer pool. Um, it, is, it is a program that you guys can use right now. I'm not saying to use it because uh, there is red flags. You know, hey, you know, you're using this. Most likely you're a criminal using this. It even says right here, Tornado Cash, criminal tool of choice. So what it does is you put your cryptos in there. It mixes it up. Um, so all your cryptos are tethered to a UTXO, which is a which is a unique identifier to the cryptos you hold. So 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 say for example, um, you have a thousand dollars in your wallet. Your wallet itself, your physical wallet, has an address etched into it. Okay. Now I can put my my wallet inside of a barrel with a bunch of other wallets and still pull my wallet out and my thousand dollars would be in there right so that's how i know that's mine that's how people can identify hey this is your thousand dollars because this is your wallet because your address is etched into the wallet now what tornado cash does is you throw that wallet and this is just i'm uh, just for, for for commoners right you're throwing your wallet that has the etched address on it with the money in there 
you're throwing it into Tornado Cash. The cash is pulled out of the wallet and placed inside of another address, which is a fresh address. You know, they, they, Tornado Cash creates um, uh, uh, just blank addresses and then spits back your cash to you with a fresh address. So it detaches from the original wallet. Therefore, people can't identify where the cash went. Unless you have a big amounts, like let's say for example, the majority of transactions on Tornado Cash are just $100, $100, $100. You get like a million hundred dollars and then all of a sudden you have a billion dollar transaction. Okay, cool. I mean, that's an obvious one. So what these guys do, what these, what these hackers do is if they have that, if they have so much uh, uh, um, cash or coin, uh, to 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 mix what they do is they break it up in smaller denominations and then they'll throw it over to Tornado Cash so they can mix it with everything else so you won't be able to identify it. Yeah. Tornado Tornado Cash. Yep. Okay. Moving over to the next one. We got two more left and we're gonna call it a day. This is written by Dimitar Zanzarov. Bitstamp introduces new global CEO after Julian Sawyer's sudden departure. Now, if you don't know, uh, Julian Sawyer was the CEO of Bitstamp. Bitstamp has been around for a long, long time. And in fact, if you ask me, Bitstamp was supposed to be like the spearhead of all crypto. But instead, I guess Crypto.com ended up stepping up and taking over that uh, that title. I, from what I see, Crypto.com has been uh, putting their, their logo on, on vehicles, on, on stadiums, and there's banners everywhere. So Crypto.com is... Um, I think when it comes to uh, uh, advertising is number one. But I think Bitstamp uh, some years ago was pretty much taking that throne and, and putting Bitstamp everywhere. But uh, maybe maybe it's because of this 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 resonation uh, of, of Sawyer. Uh, but who knows? Maybe maybe we're going to move into a new a new chapter with Bitstamp and, and, and be better than Crypto.com. OK, so uh, what happened here? Uh, so, uh, yeah. So Julian uh, Baptiste Gra Grafitutz has taken over the CEO position at Bitstamp. Um, if you guys don't know, he actually has been working already for, for uh, Bitstamp. Where, did, where was it at? Uh, it was down here somewhere. He has been working with Bitstamp for... I lost that spot. Where did it go? Da, 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 da. Oh, um, there we go. Um, Graphic Two has been a uh, has a rich experience in the field of crypto and finance, working for more than a decade at PayPal and eBay between 2014 and 2016. He was Bitstamp's chief compliance officer. There it is, uh, where he was responsible for collaborating with monetary watchdogs. So that's where he was at. Uh, obviously, he did a really good job at that position, and then he was offered the CEO position thereafter. And now look at him. Now he's a, he's a top dog. He is the number one head honcho when it comes to Bitstamp. Congratulations, sir. I salute you. Awesome. Good looking photo, by the way. All right. Last news article of the day is written by Andrew Thoravalas. Over 100,000 Cubans are now using cryptocurrency. Yes, it is true. Now, it, I don't know where you guys are at listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, but here in the States, I live, in, I live out here in California, and we are blessed to have technology, have cell phones, have computers. Cubans did not have that privilege for like the longest time until recently. Just about like three years ago, I think it was like three years ago. They Yeah, there it is. Just three years ago, they just ended up having um, cell phones. Just recently, just cell phones just reached their nation. You know, that, that's how, <laughs> oh man, cell phones, man. Come on, at all things, at least give them cell phones. So yeah, they have cell phones now. And of course, with cell phones, uh, unbeknownst, if you guys don't know, Cubans uh, traditionally don't have bank accounts, don't have credit cards or debit cards, anything like that, because it's uh, very expensive to hold um, hold your, your, your funds in, in banking accounts. On top of that, it's very uh, you you don't make that much money in Cuba. So now the Cubans are using their cell phone to uh, download wallets and use crypto. Wow, ain't that something? Yeah, who knows? Maybe Cuba is going to be the next El Salvador, you know, uh, adopting Bitcoin. And the reason they're doing this is because there's a lot of sanctions against uh, Cuba right now, uh, which is bad. But um, I mean, is it bad? Is it good? I don't know. A nation like that, uh, I don't know. Um, 
I guess it's it's very political. I guess I have to look more into it. But uh, it's it's unfortunate that they they are sanctioned um, Cubans. Uh, but here's a, here's a, here's a quote from uh, Binance CEO uh, CZ. Um, he says uh, crypto is too traceable. So so basically what they're saying is um, uh, what he's saying in regards to sanctions because uh, the whole thought of of countries trying to adopt crypto as 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 uh, I guess a currency in the nation is going to benefit the nation and they're going to be able to 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 go around sanctions but the reality is every single transaction is tracked uh, especially when you're using a large amounts and considering that a nation would use large amounts I, i'm assuming would use large amounts they're going to be traced what i just gave an example like like the example i gave earlier you know uh if if they're using some type of mixer and there's a bunch of uh hundred dollar transactions and then you got this billion dollar transaction of course you're going to know that's a, like a pretty big nation or a pretty big uh, investor there uh so yeah those are pretty pretty traceable um so he says uh cz says crypto is too traceable he said the government around the world are increasingly very good at tracking crypto transactions yes they are and that's thanks to uh white hatters in fact and keep in mind white hatters were at one point black hatters that were that that then flipped their hat you know black hatters being uh the bad hackers draining all these crypto projects and and, and pretty much burning burning these projects to the ground uh they were pretty much bought out by government government says hey um they were they were either caught by government doing bad things and saying hey we will give you a pardon or whatever um or a reduced sentence if you just work for the government and, and track these transactions and uh these hackers are very good at this so yeah they pretty much flipped their hat from a black hatter to a white hatter and are now doing more or less good for governments around the world, tracking uh, uh, criminal transactions globally. Yeah, that is it. Cryptonauts, I think we're done for today. That was a short one, short and quick. Obviously, if you want to check out uh, some more news, you can head over to CryptoPotato.com. I suggest you support them. They are pretty good at writing the news articles. They've been improving a lot now. Uh, there's a lot more news articles that I did not read, but uh, I highly recommend you heading over there and checking it out yourself and reading in more detail of what's going on because I pretty much just gave a synopsis of, of these news articles. But if you want to get into details and know exactly what's going on, uh, you guys can jump on over there to CryptoPotato.com and check them out. All right, once again, Cryptonauts, uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share the video or the podcast episode. You can check us out on YouTube, Discord, Twitter, Twitch. We are on Odyssey, obviously on Spotify, Anchor, and anywhere anywhere else you can pretty much find us. Discord, obviously, I'm always on Discord. Come hang out, hang, come hang out with me. I'm always on there. Chit chat with me. Um, I've been hanging out with some uh, developers, trying to make some uh, tink, tinker with some code on the back end. Um, maybe maybe I should stream stream on Twitch. What I, what I've been doing. Uh, yeah, that, that might be an idea. Anyway, Scriptonauts, until next time, stack sets and huddle. Adios.